Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile found... The term swamp monster conjures up different images in different people. Thoughts would range from the skunk ape said to roam the Florida Everglades to the reptilian lizard man that allegedly haunts the swamps of Lee County, South Carolina. Still others, without a doubt, think of the terrifying images of the Sasquatch-like creature dubbed the Falk monster that terrified so many back in the 1970s when the legend of Boggy Creek made its debut on the big screen. But for me, and perhaps even a few of you, the first thing that comes to mind is the fictional Paramount Fay that was featured in an episode of the 1970s series Kolchak, the Night Stalker. The Paramount Fay was, according to the episode entitled The Spanish Moss Murders, a legendary swamp monster that was humanoid in shape, but much larger and more powerful than any person. It was covered in Spanish moss and decaying vegetation. Paramafe squeezed the very life out of its victims by enveloping them in a bear hug that crushed their chest cavities. The show portrayed the Paramafe as part of Cajun lore, a legendary creature that parents frighten their children with when they fail to behave. The creature was all but invulnerable and could only be killed by a spear fashioned from the wood of a gum tree. The climactic battle between Kolchak, played brilliantly by Darren McGavin, and the swamp monster in the sewers below Chicago, made quite an impression on a then eight-year-old future cryptid enthusiast. I wondered, years after viewing this episode, if Paramount Fay was based on an actual Cajun legend. Over the years, I became quite well acquainted with Cajun culture. I've heard a lot of interesting tales from some old Cajuns. One has to be careful as these old timers are notorious yarn spinners and don't mind polishing up a good story just a bit if it helps achieve the desired effect. Even so, I never heard anyone mention Paramount Fay. I've looked often but have never found anything on this monster that connects it to anything but the old television show. It appears that Paramount Fay was purely the creation of the Kolchak the Night Stalker writing team. Having said that, it's entirely possible that the writers took some well-known Cajun folk tales and weaved elements of them together to yield the ultimate swamp monster that was Paramount Fay. It is those tales that I would like to examine now, here, with you. One of the most prominent figures in Cajun folklore is that of the Rougarou. The term is no doubt derived from the original French term Lou Garou, both of these terms are used interchangeably in French Louisiana. I heard the term Lugaru more often, but noticed even as a young boy that when the old timers told tales of the beast, they used the term Rougarou. The Rougarou legend has been around for generations and likely migrated south with the French Canadians 200 years ago. The Rougarou is, for all intents and purposes, a werewolf. It was described in the past as a beast with the body of a man and the head of a wolf. However, the monster is described most often these days as a shape-shifting human that can transform into a massive wolf-like creature during the full moon. The Rougarou is said to inhabit the swamps, marshes, and bayous of Louisiana and mindlessly slaughters any living thing unfortunate enough to cross its path. The tale, as is the case with most all boogeyman stories, is most often told around campfires and or to encourage obedience in children. One interesting twist on the Rougarou legend is that the beast will actually hunt down Catholics 
who failed to observe the rules of Lent. Some versions of the legend actually claim that one way a person can be cursed to become a Rougarou is by breaking the rules of Lent for seven consecutive years. Now most would consider the Rougarou or Lugaru it's just another legend, a myth and nothing more. After all, there is no real physical evidence to support the existence of such a fantastic creature. Or is there? Back in 1996, the De Quincey News printed a rather unusual story. It tells of a woman named Barbara Mullins who stumbled across something very unusual on the side of a rural Louisiana state highway. Mullins was driving down Louisiana State Highway 12 when she noticed what appeared to be the road-killed carcass of a large animal at the edge of the road's paved surface. She decided to stop and have a look. What she saw amazed her. She described the animal as being roughly equivalent in size to an adult St. Bernard. The beast was covered with a thick matted coat of reddish-brown hair. What really stood out to Mullins was the overall simian appearance of the animal. This didn't look like any sort of dog that she'd ever seen. The snout was more like what one would see on a baboon than a dog. The ears of the animal were small and pointy, not dog-like at all. The feature that stood out more than any, however, was the very unpaw-like feet of the creature. They were long and elongated and looked much more like the feet of an ape than those of any canine. Mullins, unlike so many people who've had strange encounters, had a camera in the car and took several intriguing photos. I have to admit that the photos of the De Ritter roadkill, as the carcass became known, are very interesting. The Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries wasted little time before stating that the animal was nothing more than a Pomeranian dog. Others felt due to the simian-like features present that the animal was some sort of primate. Some ventured this was physical evidence proving the existence of none other than the legendary Rougarou or Lugarou. Whatever the animal might have been will likely never be known. Even the photos themselves, intriguing as they are, are frustrating in that there's nothing in them that provides scale and thus verify the claim that the animal was the size of a St. Bernard. Was it just a Pomeranian dog that had gone feral or something more? Is this the real creature behind the tales of the Rougarou or the Lugarou? Of all of the swamp monster legends, that of the Honey Island Swamp Monster might be the most intriguing. The Honey Island Swamp is a tract of bottomland lying between the East Pearl and West Pearl Rivers in Southeast Louisiana. The swamp covers about 250 square miles. Of that, approximately 70,000 acres has been set aside as a protected wildlife area by the Nature Conservancy. The swamp teems with life. Alligators, cougars, coyotes, waterfowl of all kinds, bald eagles, and even the endangered red wolf have all been spotted there. Some claim something else has been seen as well. The first heavily publicized sighting of what will become known as the Honey Island Swamp Monster took place in 1963 when a retired air traffic controller named Harlan Ford claimed to have spotted the creature while fishing the black waters of the Pearl. Ford and a friend named Bill Mills later brought back casting of a very unusual footprint. The footprint was very large and featured three webbed and clawed toes. I thought strongly that this print was nothing more than a very large bull alligator, but it isn't this casting that makes me pause and consider the possibility that a monster might actually roam the Honey Island Swamp. Rather, it is the words of Harlan Ford and another local named Ted Williams, of course not the baseball player, spoken during several interviews and a piece of film that make me think that there might be something to the legend. Williams told the television crew of the famous In Search Of series, hosted by the legendary Leonard Nimoy, the following. First time I ever saw it, it was standing plumb still like a stump. 
I stopped and realized it wasn't a stump and it wasn't supposed to be there. When I stopped, it ran. It was dark gray, about seven foot high. It jumped a bayou. That was the first time I saw it. The next time I seen him was swimming near the river, the Pearl River. Two of them. One was bigger than the other and faster than the other, and they swam just like a human with long overhead strokes. I tried to get one of them to look at me, and the other one ran off, and the other wouldn't look at me at all. I could have shot it, but I wouldn't on account it wouldn't even look at me. It looked too much like a human to me. Broad shoulders, arms hanging down below its knees and hands. It looked almost like a human. One of the things William says during his interview that catches my attention is his description of how the creature stood dead still, like a stump until it realized it had been seen. Once it realized it had been spotted, the animal fled. This scenario has been described many times by alleged Sasquatch witnesses. The creature in question is clearly a Sasquatch-like animal. Another intriguing aspect of his second account is of the creature's swimming. There have been a handful of Sasquatch sightings where the witnesses claim to have seen these animals swimming. These reports were often dismissed at the time since it was believed that no apes could swim. This has now been proven wrong. The claim of seeing a wood ape swim would have been deemed too outlandish to be believed back in the early 1970s, even by those who believed in the existence of such creatures. Why would Ford and Williams say something they knew even monster hunters wouldn't believe? Ford is also among the first to mention the possibility that the creature might climb trees to escape detection. I've seen a copy of the Honey Island Swamp Monster DVD, a documentary produced by Harlan's daughter, in which another man recounted a sighting to Ford. In a nutshell, the man said that he saw the beast, and then it just disappeared. The man couldn't believe that the animal could have gotten very far in the time it took him to get to the spot where it had first been seen. And Ford asked him, Did you look up? Never forget to look up. It's little tidbits like these that lend credence to the stories of Harlan Ford. After Harlan Ford died in 1980, a reel of Super 8 film was found among his belongings. A segment of the film featured an upright creature walking right to left just inside a tree line somewhere in the swamp. His footage is one of only three pieces of video that I've seen that I believe may very well be authentic. Some dismiss the video as a hoax, and I don't, and I have reasons for feeling the way I do. Wouldn't Harlan Ford, assuming he was a hoaxer after fame, money, or attention, have promoted his 8mm film for all it was worth? Wouldn't he have gotten it out there to television producers, newspaper and magazine editors, or even local news stations? Why would he hold on to the footage and show no one? It doesn't make sense. Some might think Ford did have plans for the footage and died before those plans could be brought to fruition. I don't buy it though. I have no idea why Ford never shared the footage. Maybe he had simply achieved his goal of proving the monster was real. Maybe that was enough for him. As stated previously, the creature described by Ford and others in the Honey Island Swamp is clearly a Sasquatch-like animal. It's almost universally said to be close to seven feet tall, covered in hair and bipedal. The colors described range from a grayish hue to the more typical reddish brown. To bring this thing full circle, could the legends of the Lugaru or Rugaru be based on sightings of Sasquatches? The descriptions of the beasts are similar in many ways. Large, upright, covered in hair or fur, etc. Maybe the old Acadians that first settled those bottomlands were projecting their previous knowledge of the French werewolf to the unknown animal they were seeing in the woods near their new homes in the deep south. It is an intriguing theory. 
Tales of hair-covered, screaming, shambling, bipedal swamp monsters aren't going anywhere. Popular culture revels in these sort of things. Bigfoot is used to sell everything from beef jerky to cosmetics. The Swamp Thing of DC Comics and Man Thing of Marvel Comics both play off the Swamp Monster mythos to sell comic books. Even in Survivor Man, Les Stroud alluded to Swamp Monsters when he did an episode of his show from the Okefenokee Swamp of Southern Georgia several years back. The movie industry will no doubt continue to churn out B-grade films featuring beasts that emerge from the creepy bayous and swamps to terrorize those who dare venture into their territory. Usually scantily clad co-eds, it seems. Quietly, however, among all the noise about these monsters made by popular culture, compelling reports continue to trickle in from normal people who encounter something strange while hunting, camping, fishing, and are hiking in the bottomlands of the South. The Paramafe of Night Stalker fame may have been a figment of some writer's imagination, but real-life swamp monsters might not be. Think about that the next time you venture into the bottomlands and realize that there are more strange things under heaven and on the earth than we can possibly imagine. Thank you for listening to the Shadowland Radio Show. If you're listening on the Blackwater Media YouTube channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. You can also listen at blackwatermedia.net and the Blackwater Media Facebook page. I'm Dr. William Lester, and I promise to see each and every one of you again on the flip side.